Okay, our customer's data is coming out just fine. If we added some invoice data, we would get that just fine as well. Let's say that we want to make a change here to our schema. In a typical scenario, what we would do is we'd make the change, whatever it might be. It could be adding or removing something from one of our models, or it could be adding a new model, whatever it might be. Then we would use Prisma Migrate to create some migration files. So those would be some SQL files, which would run locally, then they would run anywhere else they need to, when we go to production, let's say. And those migration files would be responsible for getting our database into the state that it needs to be in. But PlanetScale is, again, quite different. With PlanetScale, we use branching and we use deploy requests to get our databases to get into different states. And so let's do that. Let's get a sense of what that looks like. We have got a single branch right now. It's called main. There's our main branch. It's our production branch here in PlanetScale. Let's come down here and create a new branch. And I'm going to call this one develop. It's based off of main. It's got the same region as main. We'll create that branch. And what happens here as this develop branch initializes is it takes everything, basically the current state and schema from the main branch and moves it over or duplicates it over to this develop branch. What it doesn't do, however, is it doesn't bring the data that is associated with our main branch. It doesn't bring the data itself over to develop. So in that sense, we can work with the develop branch as if it were a separate database for us. So a separate development database, they can have different data, but based off of the same schema as our main branch. So we can see some messaging here that if we want to update our main branch, we can make schema changes and then make a deploy request. Why don't we do that? Let's go and make some schema changes and we can see how that looks. Why don't we come here to our customer model and for our customer, a customer might be a company. Why don't we point a customer to a set of contacts? So contacts will be this other model that we're going to create, which can then associate with a particular customer. So we'll come down here and we'll start out that model. Model customer contact. Let's give it some of the same stuff we've got over here. We want an ID and we want these two date times as well, created at and updated at. A customer contact is going to have a first name, that's a string, a last name, string, email, string. Why don't we just do phone as well? We'll represent that as a string here just because there might be different formats, etc. So I think that's probably enough for now. We could make this a many-to-many. -many. So many customer contacts could be associated with many different customers. I think possibly a better way though is just to have this be one-to-many. So a customer contact is associated with a single customer. If there happened to be the same actual person that should be the contact between two customers, we could just create duplicate records. In this scenario, I think that's probably a little bit better for whatever these domain requirements would be. So we would point the customer contact to a customer like this. We'd hit save. Once again, bringing customer ID up beneath customer. And we are going to fix this relation here. Customer contacts, plural. That moves up here beneath invoice. We'll save that. We get this notice about no index being present. We can fix that once again with the double at index and we want to index on customer ID. So there's our set of changes. It might be tempting at this point just to go ahead and go NPX Prisma DB push. But one thing we have to consider is that we're still connected to our main branch. This connection that we've got up here in our .env file, this points to our main branch. What we really want to do is we want to target the develop branch so that we can put our changes there, work on them in a development environment, and then open a deploy request to get those changes to take effect in the main branch. The idea is that the main branch is going to be the one that we use in production. We've used it so far here in development, just getting started, but it's really the develop branch that we would use here in development, and the main branch would be reserved for production. So the spot that we need to go to fix this is over here where we connected in our terminal. Let's do control C to quit out of that. Then we are going to make another connection. P scale connect to planet scale Prisma. But in this case, instead of connecting to main, we are going to connect to develop. It gives us the same IP address and port to connect to. So immediately here, we're already connected to the right spot over in our application. We don't need to change anything here in our database URL. And it's at this point that we are safe to put up our changes. And we do that again with npx prisma db push. This targets our MySQL database at the IP and port that we specified. 
And now over in planet scale, we should be able to create a deploy request. We are on the develop branch here and we want to deploy against main. And we can put in a comment, add customer contact. We'll create the deploy request. It's open. We have one table created and one table altered. And what we can do down here is we can see what has changed. We've created the customer contact table and we've altered the invoice table. The alteration to invoice that came a little while back when we added the customer ID as the index. And the reason that we're not getting any changes reflected there for our addition of customer contacts here to the customer model is because that is something that Prisma handles virtually. In the table itself, in the customer table, we don't actually have a new field called customer contacts. We don't have a new column for that. This is handled instead at the Prisma client level. So now we can choose to deploy the changes against our main branch. It's at this point though, we might wanna do some work in our application. We might want to build some features against this schema and prove out that everything is working. But once we're satisfied with this, we can go over and we can deploy those changes. Once that completes, we can delete the branch if we want to. I'm going to keep this branch around because the develop branch is kind of where we want to be working for the most part until we're ready to put our changes into main. And you can probably start to see that this looks and feels quite a bit like Git. We branch off, we make some changes, and we create a request to have those changes take effect in the main spot. Just like in GitHub, we can delete the branch when we're done. There's definitely a lot here that is analogous to Git.